host Brian Hubbard. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. In the top of the morning to everybody, a beautiful day in Newport County. You know, I hear a lot of people talking about how hot the weather is. I happen to love it. You know, just the nice fragrances. We just have our fans going. It's a great time to be in Newport <coughs> County. And I want to remind all of you listeners out there, please do not hesitate to call in. I want to remind you, don't, do not worry about interrupting the show. We love people to call in and keep the spontaneity going. Uh, today we're having a special show. This is going to be an interesting show, and we're going to extend for another 15 minutes, so we will be going a bit longer today. And I will get into that in one second before I introduce my very interesting guest today. Uh, I want to remind you uh, to call in at 846-1028, 846-1028, and if you have any questions you want to call me personally, call me in my personal cell, 965-2268, and of course you can always visit my website at www.empowermenttherapy.com. Well, today we have a very interesting guest, but before, just one quick second, I want to welcome Cindy to being back with us. Cindy is just recovering beautifully from a nice medical situation. Great being back, Cindy. Thanks. Glad to be here. I'm sure you are. And uh, I'm sure you love being here so much. And no facetiousness there. I mean that sincerely. And I want to introduce my guest. This is a woman I've known for close to maybe 25 years. Her name is Marie Youngkin. She is also a TV personality. She does her own TV show called Tea with Marie. Uh, I've known Marie, I'm going to introduce with a little vignette at some point that kind of captures and summarizes what she is all about. But Marie is also an author and she has just written a book called To Hear the Birds Sing. Marie and I have something in common. We both have undergone cochlear implants. Uh, and, and to improve our hearing and the focus of today's show is going to be on listening with love. As a matter of fact, Marie will be doing a sermon tomorrow at her church in Navigance, Rhode Island. And um, so, without further ado, Marie, welcome to Stress Buses. Hi, Myron. I'm, I'm really happy to be here today. Great. Right. Myron, I'm sorry, that's my husband's name. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Brian, I'm sorry. You're already off to a good start. That's right, Marie. Good start. <laughs> that, that, that's okay. Uh, if, if Myron uh, wants to step aside, I'll fill him as your hobby any day. <laughs> he's, he's sitting here in his studio, too, so it confuses me. <laughs> Okay. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, where you're going to speak tomorrow? Yeah, I'm going to be speaking at the Unitarian Universalist Church. It's actually in Peacedale on uh, North Road. I believe it's 27 North Road. And the service starts at 11, but all are welcome. It's a very um, open church receiving all, all, we welcome all kinds of people and we love to have that. And I'm going to be speaking about listening as a form of love. Can you elaborate? What that means? What does that mean? Well, without giving my whole speech, right? Um, I found that after I was able to hear better, it did not necessarily mean that I would listen. I don't know if you had that experience, Brian. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So I actually had to be aware of teaching myself how to listen, and it was sort of a, a retraining of my brain, so to speak, because if you haven't listened for 60-some years of your life because you can't and you've fallen into that habit, of going to church, for instance, and sitting and listening to the sermon or trying to, and because you can't, all of a sudden you start daydreaming, you find that the rest of the time when you go to church, just when the minister comes on with a sermon, that's the time when you start daydreaming. Mm -hmm. So now that you can hear better, you might just go back into that same habit you've had for 60 years, sit at the sermon and start to daydream. You have to actually tell yourself, hey, I can hear this, but I need to be able to focus and listen to it. So even, I, I want to tell you, even people who do not have trouble hearing often daydream during the sermon, <laughs> like many, like many other uh, conversations, active listening is something we all have to learn how to do. I think that's so true, and um, I use an example of my book club, or anybody's book club, for 
somebody says something and we go around the table and then somebody else jumps in. For instance, somebody might say, um, in this book, the woman was talking about how she was getting back into life after having such painful experiences. Well, before she has even finished uttering that ex that um, <clears throat> that thought, somebody else has jumped in and is saying, oh, Ryan, did you know what happened to me last year? I had this horrible, painful experience. Somebody else jumps in and says, that's nothing compared to what I... And before you know it, the first poor woman um, doesn't even have a chance for her thought to go into a discussion or for anybody to really validate her thought. Right. Yes, Maria, you know, that's really interesting. Now, I also want to ask you this. Um, what do you find the benefits to be now that you are focusing better? How does that make things better for you? Um, the benefit now that I can hear better, Brian, is that what you mean? With my well, well, not so much hear better. Yes, that, but you're saying... Oh, not focusing better and listening better. Yeah. I, I find, that's an easy question to answer, I find the benefit is better relationships mm -hmm. with the people around me, particularly my family, particularly, um, I'd say the in-laws, like daughter-in-law, son-in-law, people that have not known me all my life that I really didn't know too well. Um, my own children knew me from birth, uh, from their birth, <laughs> yeah. from their birth, uh -huh. and so they know what to expect, what not to expect. But then when you bring in-laws into the family or uh, stepchildren, for instance, who don't know you that well, you they know, might have different perceptions when you can't hear them. Mm -hmm. So now that you can hear them better and you're listening to them better, um, really it's amazing how the relationships in the past year or two have really become better. I am more relaxed, number one. I am more relaxed. I started to realize that perhaps I was one of the sources of the tension in the mm -hmm. family. Absolutely. You know, as a corollary to that, I'd like to add something a little bit. In my experience, Marie, and Cindy, you'll be interested to know this too, as well as you, Myron. Uh, in my experience, when I had trouble hearing, in just the ways you described, and being the, the proverbial optimist that I always was, I always thought there was an advantage to every si single situation. And even though I did find myself daydreaming, and certainly in church, and I'm sure that wasn't just coincidental, but uh, in certain situations I would daydream more than others, even though I was doing that, whenever I was in situations that I was truly motivated with, usually meeting someone or uh, whatever, it forced me, it really forced me to listen, to pay close attention, to, to, to almost hang on every word. And you know, I didn't really understand the significance of that until about 20 years later when someone told me, you know, Brian, part, part of what a, a appeals you to people is that you pay so close attention to what they're saying. And then when I read a book by uh, F. Scott Peck called The Road Less Traveled, mm -hmm. you remember that book? Yeah, I know that book. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, he talked about the five stages of listening, mm -hmm. and the fifth one being listening very attentively, uh, attentively, intensively. And I, I was thinking to myself, my God, for me to communicate, I had to do all that all the time, whether I wanted to or not. You know, Did, Does that kind of register with you? Well, it does and it doesn't, because I'm thinking, I was such a good lip reader, and I know this comes into it a little bit, too. I remember as a teenager, my mother taking me to um, American Academy of Dramatic Arts because I wanted to be a, an actress, uh -huh. and um, the, the man that was interviewing me said, you're, you're such a good listener. Well, he, I don't think he realized that what I was doing was I was looking at his face and reading his lips. Absolutely. That did not necessarily mean that I was actually listening. And you know, so many people who are not hearing challenge, they can learn something from us, can't they, Marie? Definitely can, le can learn something. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> and I think that um, when you pay attention to someone and you look at their face and you are not thinking about what am I going to say next, but you're actually listening to what that person says, you're giving that person the attention, and everybody wants attention. That was another thing I was going to mention. Absolutely. When I was uh, not able to hear, and you can ask my children this, they said, Ma, you're not talking about listening tomorrow, are you? <laughs> what do you mean? They thought that was hysterical. Yeah. Because yeah. When, yeah. You're, when you're not able to hear, it seemed as though I wanted to be the center of attention mm -hmm. a lot. 
Well, that's an understandable dynamic because 